On this last Sunday of the January and midwinter, I welcome you. Good morning, church, as we're praising the Lord here at the, uh, this uh, recorded service in South Florida. But welcome to you as we gather together to praise God's name and to be inspired and touched by his word and the music today. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. We are so glad to be worshiping here, but glad that you are with us in your homes via Facebook or YouTube. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise. Let's sing together. With thanksgiving in your heart, give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voices raise, your voices raise. Your voices raise, your voices raise, give glory and honor and power unto him, Jesus, the name above all names, Jesus, the name above all As we continue, we will sing this beautiful song of praise. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. As we sing this song, 
the tune written by Beethoven many years ago, put to words that echo a song of joy to the Lord. Let's sing together. to prayer, we are instructed to cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. He cares about every aspect of our lives. So as we sing, he is our peace, who's broken down every wall. But we need to ask him, don't we? And let us pray. Lord, just as we would watch the news, read it, hear about it, all that's happening in the, our land, 
a lot of turmoil in every quarter of the land. A lot of strife, a lot of anxiety, a lot of angst, a lot of hurt, a lot of all kinds of negative aspects. The list would be longer than my arm. But Lord, and now in this post-election aspects, uh, as we are right in the middle of uh, COVID, the vaccine is rolling out. Our Lord, Lord, our country is in turmoil. All we have to do is just watch the news of what's happening in Washington, and that reflects the whole country. So Lord, you are in control. God is in control. A lot of secular people would think there's just simply chaos. But we as believers understand and believe that God is ultimately in control. So for all of the turmoil there is in our land, Lord, and all of the issues that are solvable soon, that may never be solvable, for all of the uh, opposition within the country on the extreme right and then on the extreme left. Nobody wants to meet in the middle. So Lord, I do bring it before you. And for those of our legislators and uh, cabinet ministers and those in high office, Lord, that we would ask they would seek your face, your wisdom, your guidance, not coming from the party leadership or even from their constituents, but from you. I bring our country before you. And Lord, ongoing for here in our, our local ministry, I do think of Bruce Williams and ongoing there for, for his health and his healing with his liver transplant. Lord, for the, our little baby, Mia, and her mom, and I understand they had to transfer hospitals this past week. We realize it's, it's going to be a struggle. That child has got weeks and months of struggle to survive and thrive ahead of her. So we do bring her before you, Lord, and ask for your hand upon this baby and her mom and her family and for all of the people connected with her, Lord, I bring them before you. And for who we are, what we are in this local congregation, yes, we have been down on lockdown and just starting to see light at the end of the tunnel for some aspects of ministry we can and need to do. Lord, I bring it all before you and ask for your blessing. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. When peace like a
If you recall, my sermon last Sunday was uh, on terms of, in terms of holiness. And fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians chapter 5, fits in with a life of holiness. And I want to take a few minutes this morning to look at holiness extended into the uh, Galatians chapter on the fruit of the Spirit. And verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. I want to talk about gentleness in particular out of the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit here this morning and how the Spirit can make us loving and happy and peaceful and patient and kind, good and self-controlled people. The last three, faithful, gentle, and self-control, I want to focus on a few minutes here this morning with the perspective of holiness glasses here today. Several years ago, I uh, read a book and it was by a Robert Wigger, um, Winger. It read, looking out for number one. You know that line. Several years later, he wrote another book called Winning Through Intimidation. Now, these are totally opposite of what it is to be a holiness person, a loving person, a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus had a lot to say about gentleness and meekness. One of his bylines was, the meek shall inherit the earth. I found a little story about a businessman leaving church one Sunday morning and talks to his wife on his way out the door. And he had heard a message about that, the meek shall inherit the earth. And he says to his wife, all I have to say is if the meek are going to inherit the earth, they'd better become a lot more aggressive. In talking about gentleness for a few minutes this morning, the Bible says Moses was a, you might find this ironic, but a meek man. In Numbers 12, 3, he was more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. The Bible says he was meek. It didn't mean that Moses was perfect. We know he killed an Egyptian. He complained and grumbled, grumbled to God about the grumbling of the people of Israel. He had difficulty with the Lord concerning even going to Egypt and delivering the children of Israel. He argued with God. There are a lot of things in Scripture and the Old Testament that show us that he was far from being a perfect man. But the Bible calls him a meek individual. I like to observe people and power. Whether I see it on the uh, what little video and TV I watch, or I read about it, or observe it in my everyday life, I do make a point of observing people and power. Now, each one of us has a measure of power. Some may say, Pastor, well, <laughs> you might have a little more than me. I have absolutely none. But I have watched over the years of people in power and how they handle it, whether on a local level, business level, state level, or federal government level. 
Think about this. It's actually very difficult to handle power correctly or with humility or with simplicity. It's easier to abuse it than to use it properly, I believe. Success in dealing with power is not for having a lack of it, but it is and how you handle it in difficult circumstances. Failure in some ways is easier to deal with than success in handling power incorrectly. Because when we fail, we usually are beaten down, we lose our options. But when we have a measure of success and power and more options and more influence, there are more things that can go wrong in our dealings with people. I like to watch a person in power to see how they wield that gift. Moses was pleasing to God because although he had incredible power, there was a gentleness about him. He didn't feel he had to put people in their places. He didn't feel he had to fix everybody and everything. Jesus in Scripture says, Come unto me, all ye who are heavy, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. God asks you and I to walk beside him in gentleness as he teaches us the art of gentleness. In the triumphal entry, that's probably one of the greatest examples of the gentleness that God and Jesus could ever give us. Matthew 21, 5, Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. If Jesus was trying to impress people, this was not the way to do it as he came into Jerusalem. There was a gentleness about him. And he understood, he understood that God is in control. I don't have to hassle, I don't have to hustle. God is in control. I don't have to look out for number one. In terms of our spirituality, in terms of our meekness, our gentleness, it doesn't come naturally or easily. Because of sin being introduced into our world, it is not human. <laughs> I should say it is human, but it's not normal to be meek and gentle. Our evil nature persists and dwells in and amongst us and all around us. Only the grace of God infused into our spirit gives that ability to have that spirit and attitude of gentleness. Now, over against that too, it is a conscious decision. When you invite God into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior and allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. Gentleness is a power. Note the word. Gentleness is a power under God's control. It's our personality that needs to come under God's control. Now, I do believe most of us are unique. Some of us are more unique than others. But we have to give that over to God and allow him to work in us. Is it an overnight thing? Of course it's not. Looking at uh, the Gospels, the time that the Lord sent James and John ahead into Samaria, this was at a time when Jesus was uh, bottoming out in the polls for his popularity. And the disciples couldn't stay at the Samaritan Hilton that night. And they were really ticked off. And they said, let's call fire down from heaven 
to wipe them out. Jesus never gave up on them, but he kept working on them and nurturing them and maturing them. Today you may not be that gentle person you would like to be, but there is good news. Through God's grace and maturity and seasoning, you can become that person. Gentle people are understanding. Second Peter 1, 7 reads, Learn to put your own desires so that learn to put aside your own desires so that you will become patient and godly. That's a fabulous verse, folks, for people like you and me to have a better understanding and a better relationship for and by others. Gentle people are not demanding. Wherever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder and evil of every kind as found in <coughs> James chapter 4. Watch the way you talk. For we preachers say only what helps. <laughs> Each word is a gift. What kind of expectations do we have here as we put this element of gentleness under God's control? When we are gentle people, when we are a gentle people, God uses us. Our expectations, our hopes, our dreams, our relationships with other people Ephesians 4.2, be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults. As I've equipped before, only perfect people come to our church or view us here on Sunday morning. Right? Right. People will disappoint us. And more importantly, we will disappoint other people people. Are we gentle or judgmental in our dealings with other people? Elijah, in the Old Testament, one of the greatest prophets, his big day was on Mount Carmel when the fire came down. But Elijah had the greatest day of his ministry and probably the lowest day of his ministry, all on the very same afternoon and evening. He ran off and he said, I'm no better than anyone else, right into the emotional tank. And God said to him, remember these words, Elijah, I want you to go to the cave. Now, my thoughts on that one are, going back to my school days of primary elementary, when the teacher told you, go out to the cloakroom and I will deal with you after the class, probably Elijah had some of those misgivings. He probably thought in terms of how he disappointed himself and God. He's blown it. And God is getting ready to give me my comeuppance. Where was my faith? Where was my courage? I lost it all. Remembering what he did, he went to the cave. But God worked gently with him. Things happened. Amazing things happened on the hillside that day. First of all, there was a strong wind. And after the wind subsided, the Bible says God was not in the wind. And then there came an earthquake. And after the earthquake was over, Scripture says God was not in it. Then there came fire. And Elijah had seen fire earlier in the day. And it says that God was not in the fire at that time. And then there was a gentle voice, and God was in the gentle voice. 
God wasn't beating him up. God was moving him. God was loving him. God was essentially saying, I know you're down and I know you failed and I know you feel bad. But here I am. Christianity, if anything, is not based on a people of perfect abilities. Not based on perfect people whatsoever. But if we want to be holy, we desire to do and be what God wants us to be, to be a people of holiness. put all aspects of our lives under God's control. Gentle people are proactive, not reactive. A proactive person is self-controlled. A reactive <laughs> is out of control. We've all heard people say, you make me so mad. You make me so upset. I could just scream. Or other words. A gentle person is not controlled by the responses of others. They are God-controlled. Seek God's love. Seek God's power. Seek God's gentleness in all aspects of your life. All week long, we tell people what we need or what they should do to do this or do that for me, or you better do this, you better do that even for yourself. Ask God to work on your spirit and ask God, what kind of a spirit am I exhibiting this week? God bless. Beautiful hymn of testimony. When peace like a river comes, it is well, it is well with my soul.
announcements. Again, just, uh, just reiterating them, very straightforward. Sunday school, uh, we're gearing up, not this Sunday, but I'm trusting by next Sunday we will have Sunday school on Zoom. We do Wednesday night Zoom as well. And our Celebrate Recovery, just an FYI, is still going well with a live time. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued uh, support in terms of finances, in terms of prayer and the interest as to what's happening in the Lord's uh, kingdom here in this part of uh, Palm Beach. Again, thank you. Been good to uh, be with you this week. I would ask for God's protective hand to be upon you and as you make your way through your work week and bring us all safely together, back together again next Sunday. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen.